Welcome to ACCA paper F9, Financial Management. Now, this is the last uh, video of this, this series um, concerning paper F9, which culminates in the topic of risk management. By risk management, we're talking about a concern with the um, interest rate and foreign exchange risk, which need to be identified and mitigated or hedged, uh, as we say, by uh, companies. The, um, with regard to foreign exchange risk, uh, there are three categories in which we can group such risks, transaction economic and translation risk. And in the, uh, in the, in the discussion that we have here, we will be limiting ourselves to the short-term uh, transaction risk um, realm in terms of determining, identifying um, measuring and mitigating foreign exchange risk. Um, it's also important as part of uh, risk management to uh, keep in mind that companies are also uh, affected by interest rates. And to the extent that a company has a so-called interest rate gap exposure, in other words, they may uh, gain or lose depending on which way interest rates move and depending on how the uh, assets and liabilities of a company are structured, in other words, with regard to interest rate sensitivity. Um, in paper F9, we're also introduced to the notion of basis risk. And this is the idea that if we use um, a certain financial instruments in order to hedge um, exposures, we may find that the instrument which is selected for hedging purposes does not move uh, completely in line or in sync, synchronized I mean, uh, with the prices in the underlying assets and therefore the hedge that we put into place may not be perfect. This can be demonstrated with numerical examples in the, um, in, in the uh, specific, the detailed uh, course notes. Now, for causes of exchange rate differences in the connection with uh, interest rate uh, movements, well, in the real economy, we can say that the uh, balance of payments of a country in terms of what it has to pay to uh, foreigners and what it receives from uh, exports and so on will influence the uh, demand and supply for the national currency. And this has, of course, uh, some bearing on the exchange rate. Now, the interesting thing here is a four-way equivalence model which ties together movements in interest rates and exchange rates. There is clearly correlations here. If uh, interest rates go up, for example, that would tend to have a strengthening effect on the exchange rate of a company simply because investors are more attracted to that currency if it has a higher exchange rate. By the same token, um, we can track currencies over time in terms of what their purchasing power is against um, domestic inflation. And we can say that over time, the two currencies will align, uh, realign themselves against each other, depending on what their respective um, inflation rates acting on those currencies are. In other words, all of these forces are in a kind of uh, four-way balance which is what we call the four-way equivalence, and it combines the, and makes consistent, in fact, the uh, influences of the purchasing power parity, which means that the exchange rate should adjust um, between two countries so as to equate the, effectively, the prices of a good which may be tradable uh, between the two countries. Interest rate parity theory, important because it shows that the um, foreign exchange rates are set in accordance with what the interest rate differences are between two currencies. And we also have the Fisher formula, the link between real and nominal interest rates that have been, um, that we have discussed earlier. Uh, the Fisher formula is repeated here just for um, 
review purposes. Now, it is important to keep in mind that the uh, purchasing power parity means effectively that if we have um, a Big Mac which has one cost in dollars in the U.S. and a separate price in euros in Europe, that the relative prices should uh, be reflected in the exchange rate. And therefore, one should be able to determine whether or not one or the other currency is effectively over or undervalued with respect to the other currency. Um, for practical purposes in paper P4, students should be able to do this. If we have a euro US dollar spot rate of 133, that would mean uh, $133 is equal to one euro. And if we have interest rates in euro 4% and interest rates in the states of 2%, then this would suggest that the euro price will be expected to be in the one year forward rate will be 130.44. In other words, we have to make an adjustment to the spot price, taking into account the difference in the interest rates between the two currencies. What we're also saying here, this is an important observation to keep in mind, is that the currency that has the higher interest rate will actually have a lower price in the forward market. This may seem strange and counterintuitive to the student, but this can be demonstrated numerically. Pay careful attention to the spot rate and to the implied spot in one year's time based on the differences in interest rates. Interest rates, of course, are influenced by what people expect the movements to be in interest rates, also by liquidity, so-called liquidity preference. In other words, when investors choose to deposit their money rather than to um, spend the money immediately, what they're doing is sacrificing uh, the availability of immediate liquidity and also consumption, and therefore want to be compensated for saving, uh, effectively saving their resources. Um, another way of thinking about uh, interest rates uh, in terms of a yield curve is to think about segmenting different parts of the yield curve according to who is borrowing or making funds available at different parts of the maturity spectrum. And this market segmentation gives one a better idea of understanding what the maturity ranges are relative to interest rates themselves. The market segmentation effectively captures the idea of different investor preferences with regard to different maturities. Now, very important in this chapter is the understanding and the application of hedging uh, techniques for, for uh, primarily for foreign currency risk, but also to a limited extent for uh, interest rate risk. Now, there are different things that a company can do in order to uh, manage its currency risk through currency by, in, in, by determining the currency of the invoice, netting and matching, leading and lagging, and so on, as described here. There's also the money market hedge in which a company can effectively construct what is the effective equivalent of a forward market. And one has here a systematic uh, numerical example which demonstrates this um, money market hedge. If we take a company which is to receive pounds in six months' time, clearly the risk that the company faces is that the pound will decline between now and the time it receives the pounds. The money market hedge here demonstrates way, the way in which the company can protect itself or insulate itself against a deteriorating pound by effectively selling the pound in the forward market by getting rid of it through immediate action. This is the idea of the money market hedge. Futures uh, contracts can also be used for hedging purposes, as can options. Options are defined 
in a very precise way with regard to what is a call option, the right to buy a currency, or a put option, the right to sell the currency. There's a symmetry here with respect to options, um, which the student needs to be um, aware of. Swaps in, uh, would be another way in which uh, a company can borrow foreign currency without incurring foreign exchange risk because it has the possibility of uh, borrowing foreign currency and then returning it at the maturity date without having to incur a gain or loss on, on foreign exchange. Now for interest rate risk, again, there's a set of, of uh, hedging techniques that can be used and need to be understood for the purpose of the exam. Um, apart from matching and smoothing um, or just managing the structure of assets and liabilities through a so-called asset and liability management process, there are external transactions that a company can enter into vis-a-vis uh, -vis a bank in order to manage its interest rate risk. And one case which is shown here is the so-called forward rate agreement. Um, if you follow the forward rate agreement according to this timeline, the uh, a borrower has to buy an FRA in order to hedge, and the borrower will buy the FRA at t equals zero and will settle the FRA at t equals two in this case, which is when the theoretical loan period would commence. The um, the designation of the appropriate forward rate agreement is unambiguous and student has to pay careful attention to how to the description of the appropriate um, uh, hedge. Futures, uh, interest rate futures contracts is another, uh, present another way for a company to be able to, uh, for a borrower effectively to be able to protect against interest rate um, risk, i.e. a rise in interest rates, or on the other hand, a depositor, somebody who has, who's cash rich and wants to make deposits in the future can also protect themselves against declining interest rates by entering into transactions uh, involving interest rate futures contracts. Options are also available on interest rate uh, risks as are swaps. So these are collectively known as derivative products and each one has a specific use in connection with uh, serving a hedging purpose uh, when a company wants to uh, limit or mitigate its risk in the foreign exchange or interest rate um, markets. Thank you.